Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper and to this very important and very special video that I'm doing covering who the true biblical Hebrews are. I first off want to say, as if the warning at the beginning of the video wasn't enough, I want to make sure and reiterate this that I'm not a racist person, uh, nor am I a person that hates certain individuals. I love all of humanity. I want to see all of humanity making a new kingdom. But nevertheless, there is true Hebrews, there is a true people of the Most High that is scattered throughout the nations of the earth this day. It is not whom that many people believe they are, such as the so-called Jews in the nation state of Israel that we so see before us right now. I would interject that the true biblical Hebrews are the so-called African American people that are scattered abroad throughout the world. Now, I will show you through a mass amount of evidence that I'll put up on the screen right here verses below and you can do your due diligence and research these things out to see if they be so. It is very important that you understand who the true Hebrews are because that end time prophecy, lots of it, surround these individuals. I am a Gentile. I know exactly who I am, but it seems to be the one group of people in the world that have been by the rest of the world tried to be dumbed down to the fact or completely erase their history uh, from history is the African American people so-called that are scattered throughout the nations. Now please understand that not every single black person is a true Hebrew but it is those that are under the curse of Deuteronomy 28 and you'll be able to tell by the time that I'm done giving you this information in this video who the true Hebrews are and you may be one of them. So let's begin. You know which uh, are an ancient community of the Israelite exiles now this is, uh, for the most part, the general consensus of the largest people in Africa. You do have different groups like the Abu Dai in Uganda, who aren't saying they're from the Lost Tribes, but have joined the people of Israel in the large amounts of numbers. Uh, one other location I'd like to, actually before I go into this other location, what's fascinating is, which I speak about, is the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, a large percentage of it actually came from Igbo territory. So these Igbo today in Nigeria, who are practicing Jews, numbering the 40 million people with customs and traditions, doing circumcision on the eighth day, were the same exact people brought to the Americas on the transatlantic slave trade. Now, if someone goes to Times Square in New York today, you'll see uh, you know, African Americans dressed in Israelite outfits and yelling at people saying, you're not the real Jews, we're the real Jews. Uh, and so, most people saying, well, you guys are kooky, you just made this whole thing up, you made up a religion and an identity. Actually, no, they are the blood descendants, most likely, of the people who, from Israel, were brought from Africa to America. So it's very fascinating, but what they need is, is discernment. 14 verses are talking about God is God is telling the Israelites okay if you keep my commands this is what I'll do for you the remaining verses are he's telling them if you don't keep my commands then this is what will happen I want to read chapter 28 and verse 68 it says and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships by the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again, and there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Now if you were to get a globe, and you were to look at where the Hebrew Israelites were at, they would not need a ship to get to Egypt. So God was obviously talking about something else. He wasn't talking about the physical land of Egypt. If you look in Exodus 13, 3 and Deuteronomy 20 and verse 2, it refers to Egypt as a house of bondage. Now, I want to show you something, and I know everybody has seen this. I saw it a million times, but never paid any attention and never really thought twice about it. But on the back of the dollar bill, there's a pyramid. Now, pyramids are notorious with Egypt. I mean, you say pyramid, that's automatically what you think of is Egypt. So why would the United States of America put a pyramid on the back of their dollar bill? Now, with the word Egypt meaning house of bondage, God was obviously telling the Israelites, hey, I'm gonna put you back into slavery. Now, the only race of people that were brought over on ships and sold as bondmen and bondwomen, which are slaves, are the so-called African Americans. That, that's the term that the white man has given them. Now, like I said before, 
if after you do this research, which I, I don't expect you to take anything that I'm telling you, I, you know, look it up for yourself, do the research, that's what I did. Anytime I was shown a scripture, shown something in a book, I'd look it up myself. And do the same thing. And if at the end of that, you still can't see it, then I really don't know what else to say. But I, I want the black Hebrew Israelites, I, I'm trying to help to get them woke up and to see the rich heritage that they really have and what a blessing to be one of God's chosen people. I mean, honestly, I'd give my left foot to be one of God's chosen people. It's said that once you've been to Africa, the continent is locked in your heart forever. The deep cultural heritage is unmistakable and unchanging. The same can be said for the Middle East, where the people of Israel have passed down their traditions for centuries. But the Lemba are something completely different. This tribe, who live in Zimbabwe and South Africa, claim they are direct descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel. Is it possible they are who they say they are? Astonishingly, the facts support their miraculous oral tradition. When the nation of Israel was formally reestablished in 1948, there was the hope by some that Jews everywhere would become unified once again. After all, God is faithful to his promises to the people of Israel, specifically. I will watch over and care for Israel, and I will bring them back here again. I will build them up and not tear them down. I will plant them and not uproot them. Inspired by this prophetic promise of God, a great pilgrimage began, a journey made by Jews across the globe to mend a fracturing of people that occurred centuries ago. In the 8th century BC, as noted by historians and the Bible in 1 Kings, the Assyrian Empire conquered the northern kingdom of Israel, captured its people, and dispersed them over Assyrian territory. Historians say some were killed, many were blended into other cultures, and others fled. Thus began the tradition of the lost tribes of Israel. Lemba oral tradition passed on through generations says they came from the rabbinical tribe, the Levites. The Lemba say they fled their original home and traveled to Sena in modern day Yemen, where they became traders and craftsmen until they were forced to escape war or natural disaster. This drove the Lemba across the Red Sea to Africa. During their journey down the African continent, Tradition says the Lemba built great cities of stone. This is where science comes in. Archaeologists have verified the existence of these cities. In addition, at these stone city sites, many artifacts have been discovered. These facts are a direct tie to the oral tradition handed down by generations of Lemba. Tribes all over Africa have kept their traditions and customs, but the Lemba are like no other tribe. Strict adherence to Jewish customs have been watched over by Lemba rabbis. Despite losing their original Torah on the journey from Israel to Zimbabwe, all oral teachings and traditions have been maintained. The same kind of oral teaching described in the Old Testament. Dietary laws, including kosher standards and restrictions on meat are obeyed circumcision. Intermarriage has been strictly forbidden to preserve the culture and bloodline. Traditional rabbinical clothing is worn. In a place thousands of miles away from Israel, detached from all Jewish culture, these African Jews who call themselves original Hebrews are committed to their way of life that has been passed down generation to generation. Eventually, 
DNA testing advanced to the point where the Lembus claims could be put to the scientific test. University of London scholar Dr. Tudor Parfit swabbed a cross-section of Lemba tribe members, and the results were astounding. The Y chromosome, passed on by many males in the population, proved to contain the Cohen modal haplotype. Among Jews, the CMH marker is most prevalent among Kohanim, or hereditary priests. In addition, this marker is one that only emanates from the Middle East. It is not found in any identifiable African roots. Even more astounding are the following stats. The CMH marker shows up in 50% of the Lemba tested. The same marker shows up only 3 to 5% of the time in the general Jewish population. What could be tradition lost in generations of translation has proven to be quite the opposite. Stories passed on generation after generation backed up by scientific proof.